Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for yet more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing Boggles. Now, this deck is kind of like a modern deck from days gone past that isn't really good in modern as far as I'm aware due to the way things line up. But we're going to try it in legacy because we have a few different tools at our disposal here. So what is this deck trying to do? Very simply, we are trying to play Slippery Boggle or Invisible Stalker or sometimes True Name Nemesis if things have gone a little bit awry and we need to play a guy on three. We're trying to play one of these guys that our opponent can't interact with. And then we're just going to tool it up. So we have 14 Curiosity effects. This one is Life Link and Curiosity. This one is just Curiosity, but it's better on a Legendary guy. We were going to have Geist of St. Drafting instead of True Name Nemesis, but we've gone for the True Name just because if you're playing a three mana guy, things probably aren't going great for you. So having a guy who can then block that turn is pretty useful. Um... We've got Curiosity, we've got Curious Obsession, which is better than Curiosity as long as you're attacking. And we've got all of these pump effects. We've got Ethereal Armor, which is plus one, plus one for each enchantment you control, so that should be pretty big. Hyena Umbra, which gives our guy Totem Arm, which probably won't be that relevant, but the first strike on plus one, plus one will be. Daybreak Coronet, which is kind of the big going over the top spell here. So it's plus three, plus three, first strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink, so this should just stonewall a lot of aggro decks. And we've got a couple of Spirit Mantle, just in case we need to push through some things. And to tie the room together, four Force of Will because we have loads of blue cards. So that's pretty much the deck. There's a few little interesting things to comment on, I suppose. Our mana base, we've got these Sea Chrome Coast, which you don't see very often because we just need to cast blue and white spells in the first few turns of the game. So they should be pretty good here. We also have three Lotus Petals. So we've got 16 lands and three petals. Because Invisible Stalker and True Name aren't necessarily the, the cheap threats we want, we, we need to have a Slippery Boggle ideally. The Lotus Petal means that if we open a hand with Invisible Stalk, we can at least get that into play. Now, there are some problems with this deck. Firstly, we don't have that many threats. Ten cards is not a lot of guys. So we are prone to getting thought seized or dazed away or, you know, countered. That's going to be an issue. But if they can stick, we should be alright. So this deck should be alright against things like Initiative. Because... Our creatures can actually be bigger than their creatures, which is not something that happens too often. And we also have the ability to beat them in combat with first strike or just protection. And we can hopefully draw enough cards from our deck to do that. Now, there are caveats here because if they can make a turn one, three, three, that's going to outclass our turn one, one, one. But hopefully the force of will will come in clutch there and just delay them a turn. So this deck isn't very clever isn't smart and intricate it's make a guy tool it up and smash away but i wanted something a little bit different today so that's why we're going for this our combo matchup isn't atrocious because we have force of will and when we look at the sideboard we've got three force of negation to help that and then we've got some other tools so we've got these stony silences and we've got some deafening silences so we've got a little bit of play against various combo decks so these will both come in against storm for example we've got a couple of surge of extraction so we are liable to getting turn one by reanimator a little bit. And I don't think we can really do much about that. We can certainly play some more cards that might be useful. But it'd take up a lot of sideboard space. And I'd rather have access to having three sorts of plowshares and three march of the worldly light. The march is here. Hopefully we're going to be drawing lots of cards. Because our whole deck is just curiosities all the way down. So we're hoping that the march we can cast of one and just get rid of a lot of stuff with it. It's going to be good at removing things like... And snaring bridges that might cause us trouble. So hopefully all our pieces will come together relatively well. And we'll just bash some people up. That's pretty much it. So this might not be your cup of tea today. But I think it'll be a fun one. Because we're playing something a bit out there for Legacy at least. Alright, just before we jump into a league. Let me say, if you would like to subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out. Likes and comments also welcome. If you want to support my channel, these are the best ways of doing that. Alright, let's jump into a league with Legacy Boggles. Okay, so we're on the draw here. We can make a turn to Invisible Stalker and then start going to town with it. We have a Force of Will to keep us going. So I think we can keep this. If we get Thoughtseize, we might have to Force of Will the Thoughtseize, which is not a great place to be. Our opponent is Melta, six cards. A Street Wraith. Okay, so this is either Doomsday or Death Shadow. So their removal won't do an awful lot to us, but their discard can do. Also, their Wastelands can rip through our creatures, uh, through our mana base quite easily. Right, we're going to play this out. And hope we don't get wastelanded. Because we're playing Secret and Coast, the chances of us getting wastelanded seem higher because it's a bit of an unusual land. They don't seem to have a... Okay. That's interesting to me. 
If we draw a land, then we might hold off for a turn on the Invisible Stalker. So the question is, if we play an Invisible Stalker now, and they have a Daze, we're in trouble. Uh, I think we do have to go for it here, though. Let's try and put this guy on a stack. So it's going to be a Brainstorm. It's going to be a Daze. I think we just have to do it this way, which is pretty gross for us, if they have a Force of Will or something. But if this guy gets in play, our opponent should struggle to deal with it. All right, so our opponent is back to zero resources in play, and we have an Invisible Stalker, a Ponder, sure. It's nice to play a deck that uses Force of Will aggressively for a change. Let's see what we draw. A Combat Research. So we can just draw two cards here. I think that's the best thing we can do. This will only hit them for one damage as well, so it's not gonna make, give them a, an easy route to making a Death Shadow. But hopefully draw us two cards. This guy's unblockable as well, which is quite a nice bit of text on him. It means you can always steal the initiative. Okay, let's have a look. I would very much like to draw some cards. All right, we're kind of hoping for another land here. Okay, so we found another creature. That's not ideal, but we can play the Daybreak Coronet next turn if we want to. Our opponent is in a little bit of bother here. Okay, so now they can play a Death Shadow. There it is. A land would be nice here. Still not a land. Like our opponent must have a daze in hand. It's just the, the feeling I'm getting. So let's play this one first. Our opponent shouldn't be able to kill us this turn either. And we just have a two turn clock here. Because this can hit for 13 maximum usually. If they have like a dress down or something. Now dress down does make our creature lose its uh, a lot of its text. Okay, we can play out the sea chrome coast. I don't think we have to play out another one of these things. I think we can just hold it open. And represent something to our opponent because this is just lethal. Street Wraith, sure. If they dropped like the red banner and gave it double strike, I'd be very surprised. And then I would die. Okay. This is hit for 10. A Baleful Strix. So this can't block, so this can't be blocked. Okay, cool. So we got to win with the Invisible Stalker. Death Shadow. Interesting. So the, the plows here are going to be pretty good against some of their creatures. Other than that, Nothing too spectacular going on. The Trina Nemesis will be all right here. Spirit Mantle might be necessary to push through. So I don't think we can sideboard that out. We're probably looking at trimming some, maybe some curiosity effects. So maybe we get rid of one combat research and one curiosity. And then we can, what are we looking at here? This one is two mana, so it's a little harder to resolve. So maybe we're just boarding that one out. All right, so this hand doesn't have any creatures in, we have to mulligan. This hand doesn't have any lands or creatures in, we have to mulligan. This does have a creature eventually. I think we can keep this, but it's not filling me with joy. So we're probably looking at getting rid of Spirit Mantle is not going to be necessary because this is going to have protection. And probably get rid of the Curious Obsession because the other one's just better if we're looking at putting on a three drop. I think we are very unfavored beginning this game. Thought Seize is pretty backbreaking for us here. There it is. So we lose our threat. So we've got nine more to draw in the deck. So not great. We do get to be on the play for the last game though. So we just play out a Flooded Strand. They know we have it and also it can't be wastelanded. So opponent's gonna need to reduce their life total and put some stuff. In. Okay, so we're gonna lose the other card in our hand. This game is not looking great for us, but we can just draw a guy and then run a runner for cards. Like uh, what we got here, a Ponder, sure. So yeah, so we can draw a guy and then just draw some enchantments and then we'll be fine. I don't know if our opponent's going to have Sudden Edict. They might do and it might be bad for us. But there's not much we can do about that, I'm afraid. Right, so it's our turn. We're not a Brainstorm deck either, so not too good. We'll put, play a Sea Chrome Coast. If our opponent wants to spend a turn Wasteland on that, it doesn't really bother me too much. We may as well get our lands that come in untapped now. We're just looking to play a little Boggle, or um, I think this Stalker will be the better creature here than the Boggle. Especially when we've already got to the stage of the game where we're not trying to ram something out super early. Right, Brainstorm from our opponent. There's a Wasteland. Sure. Like I said, I don't really care about this. And a Death Shadow. This is the 2-2 for now, but it can grow pretty quickly. So we're looking like we're not winning this game, to be honest. A Force of Will. That's not really going to help us do anything here. Just see how quickly the clock is from the Shadow. Now we can present a very quick clock if we draw guys and things to stick on said guys. Scalding Tarn, cracked the water grave, 
Uh, so what, this is going to bash us up. I think we can. I think we can call it here. We don't need to waste our time on this one. Should we be trying to keep a higher density of good effects here, or just the swords? I think just the plows is still fine. I think this is okay. We'll just submit again and try and play out a turn one threat. My opponent can run powder keg to blow up our guys. Yeah, the Thoughtseize count spell deck is not one we're particularly hoping to play against here. Okay, so we don't, we don't have a problem with creatures here, so we'll keep this. Play out the slipperiest of burgles. This could get a force of will from our opponent. It did not. Okay, so probably just playing out the invisible stalker next turn. And then we can start tooling up, hopefully, unless we draw like some curiosities and things. There's a watery grave. And I thought so. Sure. So they might take the Spirit Mantle here because it's the only enchantment we have. But that's fine. Our deck is absolutely round full of these enchantments. Our hand is pretty thought seize proof, I think. Two mana for plus one plus one and pro creatures isn't it's probably the worst enchantment in our deck at this point. So Yeah, they took it though, like I thought they would. Let's see what we draw. An invisible stalker. Like we have to get attacks in, so I think we attack here. And we play this guy. They can daze this perhaps. They did not. Okay. So this also is two different creature types. So we get to dodge a Plague Engineer. One of the reasons I was thinking of playing Geist instead of True Name Nemesis is so that we didn't have two rogues. Because this is a rogue and so is the True Name. Thoughtseize. Sure, you can take another Invisible Stalker. This might give them the ability to deploy a um, Death Shadow though. Which will be a very re reasonable clock here. The Geist doors also make the Ottawara um, pretty... Pretty good because I'd be able to make it cheaper. All right. Sorry, I was just being asked if I would like a cup of tea. So my attention was elsewhere momentarily. Okay, so we are just drawing nothing here. Uh, I think we just have to pass. We don't really have anything going here. If I attack them for one, it means that the amount they attack me for is increased by one. It's just not worth it. So if we can, if they can deploy another Death Shadow and we can draw a Swords to Plowshares. That would be lovely, because you can two for one quite easily with a plow. If we draw a land next turn, we can Ottawara. Not exciting, but it's a thing we can do. Ideally, we can draw Staggering Insight, I think it's called, and then get some lifelink on our Invisible Stalker. And then the two that we hit them for, we gain back immediately in terms of the damage anyway. So, we got here? A Narset. Okay, so that will shut down the Curiosity. But we can just jam these at the Narset quite easily. I would say that our opponent is heavily favoured right now, but it doesn't take much. So we get like Curious Obsession this turn, isn't really going to draw us any extra cards, so we probably need something that gives us a bigger boost. I don't think we have anything... No, I think we just have to chip away at the Narset here. The Death Shadow is probably not attacking us this turn though. An Engineered Explosive, so that can't kill both of our guys. It can only kill one of them. And it will probably kill the Invisible Stalker, because if they try and kill the Boggle, it will kill their Death Shadow. But this is unblockable, so we can jam this in. A Daybreak Coronet. So this will be good at some point. So we send this at Narset, so if it, if it ticks down, it has to die in order to do that. We don't want to play out the Ottawara just yet. We might as well hold it. Because if we draw a land and need to bounce something, that's good. But if we don't draw a land, then we can just play it on our turn anyway. And play the Coronet. This gives us the most options, keeping it in hand right now. So we can draw Coronet and something. Now we have to keep in mind what our opponent plays their explosives out on. Because if they play it out on two, then the Coronet can just get killed by that. Okay. A little bit tricky. A Daze. I don't think the Daze is going to be useful now, but we know to play around it. And our opponent is sitting on a Wasteland, so they might be incentivized to try and Wasteland us this turn. Funny old game, this one. We can also play, if we get the Hyena Umbra, if they put an uh, explosives on two, Okay, they've just played that guy. If we put an explosive on two, we can put Hyena Umbra on our Invisible Stalker. And then, if they blow it up, the totem just goes away instead. They might attack this turn. Yeah, okay, there, there's the attack. We're not blocking this. It's only two damage. There could be a Street Wraith to pump it, but I don't think it's worth wasting our Boggle for when we know our opponent has an answer for our Stalker. Right, back to us. What do we got? A Tundra. Not a very exciting one, is it? I think we have to play it out. Um, we're not really attacking here. Are we attacking? I guess we get one in. Our opponent goes to ten. Hmm, it's much of a muchness, I think. But we, because we have the Ottawara was sat on here, we can get around things nicely. They probably don't have a Stifle. 
So I know we have this off to our, I believe. So brainstorm with fetch land, pretty good. So this days is probably leaving their hand at this point. We do need to draw some enchantments, which is a lot of our deck at this point. Got what, 10 creatures, four forces, three plows, and the rest is either land or enchantment. We can take this point of damage here. See if our opponent has a follow-up. A plague engineer, interesting. This is going to kill probably our boggle. No, interesting. We don't really want to bounce this for obvious reasons. I think just to be mana efficient, we should be bouncing the Death Shadow this turn. I'm pretty sure we're dead here. Our opponent's got a lot of tools against us. And the Trina Nemesis is a bad draw now because of this, which is why I wanted the Geist, but we'll see. Curiosity, Vigilance, First Strike. Hmm. All right, here goes nothing. We can play the Coronet around days. We can attack into the Plague Engineer here. White, white. And you can play around a days, but it looks like I got Force of Will, sure. So if we send this in, it's gonna die. So I don't really want to do that. So we can't play the Invisible Stalker. Our opponent can play an Explosives and blow up our Boggle and our Curiosity here. Which is something we played into because we needed to get hit with the Daybreak Coronet, I think. Us bouncing the Death Shadow gave them that line, but I think if we don't bounce the Death Shadow, we'd probably die this turn. So they can pop this and then play Death Shadow, and then we're pretty much dead. Our hand hasn't really done anything this game. We haven't drawn any extra cards. Our opponent's deck has a lot of tools for us. So we can't play out the card in our hand, and we're dead on the next turn. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we're dead next turn. We have one draw. Has to be like a plow to keep us in this game, I think. And even then, what are we plowing? Curious Obsession. Like, we can flip this onto one of their guys and hope that we draw a card off of it. They just won't attack with it, maybe. But we can't put this on because this is our end step, isn't it? Okay, so our opponent just needs to deal themselves two points of damage. So, fetch land, or a shock land, or a thought season, we're dead. There's a thought season, we'll concede the game. So, the whole point of having all these guys that your opponent can't interact with is so that you can just have these guys and just go to town. Now, the issue we have in this matchup is our opponent had multiple points of interaction with our Hexproof guys. Because they have the Explosives, they have Thoughtseize, they have Plague Engineer. And they have counter spells. So, yeah, I imagine this matchup is probably pretty horrible. Um, but, such is life. We did get the one game off of them anyway, so let's go into the next round. So this is a turn to True Name Nemesis on the draw with Force of Will that we might have to throw away our True Name Nemesis with. I think we can do better. This is better. Um, we put one of these on the bottom. Probably the Hyena Umbra here because we need to keep the blue card for Force of Will. A Forest from our opponent and a Nettle Sentinel. Okay, so we're looking at Elves here. We don't have a great deal for Elves. Our Deafening Silence is decidedly poor against them, so that's no good. But they're not going to counter our spells, so we do have that working for us. We will need a way of making our Boggle push through all their creatures. Well, there's, there's one of those things I was literally just talking about, sure. So we'll play out this Boggle. A Lotus Petal would be a really good draw for us, because then we could Curiosity and Spirit Mantle. We might just have to Spirit Mantle on our next turn. A Cradle. It's Birch Law. It is Birch Law. Um, so if we counter this, it cuts them out of mana for the turn. They can just play a 1-drop. I think it's the best way of slowing them down. This means they only have one mana available this turn for the rest of the turn. Because if they had another elf, they could play the Birch Law, tap for mana, play a guy. If this attacks and they don't play a creature that wants to block a Boggle. Now, a lot of the creatures, they'll probably happily throw underneath the Boggle. So, a Green Sun Zenith. So this is a Dryad Arbor. Okay. We're not attacking without putting a thing on our guy first. So, Hyena Umbra is a pretty good draw though. Let's get another Tundra. So we go blue on this one to make him curious. And put this on him to pump him and give him first strike. So they can't even double block it. So I'll either get to draw a card here or kill one of their guys. And then hopefully we can draw some of the big hitters like a Daybreak Coronet or the... Okay, so just let us draw a card, sure. Yes, I would like to draw a card. Okay, so we've got the Coronet. So next turn we can make our guy bigger and vigilant -y. So now they can start throwing guys under the bus, but then we can Spirit Mantle away. 
Our opponent could just have a turn where they go off. Three mana off the cradle. A Y with Symbiote. Sure, so they're going to replay the Visionary as well. We can't just pass priority necessarily because we want to at least hold up the illusion of Force of Will. And I doubt this game is going to come down to clocking. A Winter Teeth. So they're going to attack with the Nettle Sentinel first to get the chip damage in to make it easier to create Hoof Fast next turn probably. And then they're playing another Wildwood Symbiote. This allows them to play multiple Elvish Visionaries next turn. They only have two cards in hand though. A Lotus Petal. Does that impact anything? So they can put a guy underneath this. So I think we just equip it like this so that they can't chump block it. Because what they can do is they can chump block and then they can bounce this way. This is unblockable now. We're not gaining any life though. So our opponent can kill us with the Allosaurus, Shepherd and stuff. Hopefully we're going to draw a card. That'll be really, really good. Not necessarily that good. So we have a choice of whether we play out the Slippery Boggle as a chump blocker. Or we... Yeah, I think we do have to play the Slippery because they've got two elves here. So that's 10. 11, 12, 13. Or maybe we can survive. But if they have any way of pumping another guy, I think we do have to just play out the Boggle here. It's not exciting, but I think if they play an Allosaurus Rider and pump all their guys, being able to save ourselves the damage is probably going to be quite useful there. And then we can next turn start getting some lifelink damage going in. So we'll be hitting for six next turn. Okay, so our opponent can make all the mana in the world now. Mana is certainly not the issue, and they've got two bouncers with Visionary here. Now they could just cast a Natural Order and kill us. There's a the Natural Order, so this is Crate Hoof and we're dead. So the only way we win is if our opponent has Crate Hoof in their hand instead. Okay, so we're dead. Sure. So, how do we beat elves with this? Removal spells, probably going to be good. We've got these March of the Worldly Lights that can pretty cheaply kill off their guys. Deafening Silence is creature. Can't cast non-creature spells, so this won't do anything against them. There is an option for maybe having the Force of Negation to counter Glimpse Chains and to counter Natural Orders. I don't hate that as a strategy. But if we do this, how many slots are we looking at here? Looking at cutting an awful lot of things. And we're just getting rid of these because we've got some one drops here that we want to be casting anyway. The Hyena Umbra, th these are all good. I think we're probably trimming some curiosities. The true name is good because it can't be blocked. Whereas the Slippery Boggle can be blocked, which is not good for us. I don't know if we can realistically play these Force of Negations looking at how it lies right now. Maybe we're doing something like this and leaving the Force of Negations in the sideboard. So we need to hold our Force of Will. So this is like a controly hand that doesn't really do anything. I think we can mug in. Okay, so we can keep this and... Oh wait, we don't have a blue source here, do we? Oh my god, what am I doing? Um, Alright, without a blue source, this hand is looking worse. Probably getting rid of the curiosity here. Oh dear, that was a bit of a punt there. Oh, two... oh geez. Ah... Uh... Right, so we'll play out planes, and then we'll be much for the volley lighting. It's like the only combination of two lands that doesn't give me blue mana, I think, in the whole deck. Quirion Ranger. Not a very exciting one. Hyena Umbra. Play out this Caracas. I don't think we need to remove this creature. I think we save it for one of the mana guys. And then we'll untap and draw a blue source and everything will be fine. A Bayou. So they could do doing thoughts easy type things. Elvish Visionary. That's not very exciting. Probably pecking away for one this turn. Ottawara. So there's our blue source. We'll play this. We'll play out this guy. I think we probably do that this turn. Because much rather would like to kill any of these guys. It would cost two. So I should have much rather would like to at the end uh, the query on Ranger, I think. Because now if they play a Heritage Druid, they can generate a lot of mana. And a Cradle. Okay. All right. This is a very good target to match for the body light though. Okay, now we can't do that because they have a white symbiote. Hmm. It feels like single spot removal isn't really going to be doing us a lot of work here. We kind of need like Plague Engineer type lock pieces for this sort of matchup. That's not something we have in our deck. Okay, so just replaying the visionary. I don't really know how we can... We can bounce this and they can replay it and still activate it. That's not going to work, is it? We need to find more removal. I think we're just dead here, to be honest. We're playing a bad deck. <laughs> and our opponent isn't, I think, is part of the issue here. We didn't keep a great hand either. 10-3 Invisible Stalker is very slow. 
does gain us some life. So it's 5, 10, 15, 21 damage our opponent is presenting us here. So maybe we need our opponent to commit some damage here. Or maybe we can use that much rather already light in our in their attack step. Reclamation Sage. It's a pretty good one. And they can rebuy this as many times as they like with Wildwood Symbiote. So yikes. Pretty sure we're dead here. I think I'm pretty close to just picking it up, I think. Yeah, I think we I don't think we can win this game. I think we just concede. Not a not a happy one for the boggles. Opponent had some useful interaction and we kept a sloppy hand. Yeah. Alright, let's go on to the next round. Alright. We can't keep this hand. Our opponent is the person who played the Jess Guy Ascendancy combo against me a little while ago. I think we have to keep this one. We have many invisible stalks, we can send one back. Our opponent is also mulligan to four. So our terrible deck might be able to get there. Not sure what they're playing there. They could be playing something with Okay, Horizon Canopy. So it doesn't look like it's an Echo of Eons deck, which was one of the things. Field of the Dead. That's a pretty low amount of cards to start the game with. Though. Play out this. Wasteland is bad for us, but our opponent has one card in hand. I imagine it's probably Life from the Loam if you keep this. Probably what you're going to pick. Mulch. Yeah? Okay. Four cards enter the Revealed Zone. None of them are a Wasteland, so that's good. They do have a, a Tabernacle hanging out there, so I've got... This and the maze are gone. The maze will be very bad against us, thankfully. It's just good deck building, right? Okay, so let's go for blue. Blue. Make this invisible stalker. And then they'll probably play the tabernacle this turn, so we have to pay with one, and then we put combat research with the other mana. And then we hopefully draw some more lands and pump our guy a bit more. So there's a tabernacle. And there's a Caracas. So that's a good one for us. This gives us staggering insight instead. So, I think it's the better play here. We could put Combat Research and Hyena Umbra, but that's the same amount of power. This is lifelink, so it's all the same effects, really. The only way we get punished is if they have a way of destroying our creature. I'm not sure if they do. We know our opponent has a Mana Bond in. Wait. Oh, no, the Mana Bond was revealed, wasn't it? A Dark Depths. Okay, so our opponent is going to make a 20-20. That doesn't kill us. We don't need to use that, because this Mana goes away anyway, we might as well save it for the turn we want to load some more stuff up on our guy. So our opponent can hit us for 20 if they want to. Then we bounce their creature with Caracas and then hit them again. So I think we're in an okay spot. If I were them, I would have sacrificed the Maze of Ith instead of the Snow-Covered Forest here. You save one damage on yourself and I've made it abundantly clear that Maze of Ith isn't doing a lot. Now our opponent could draw... No, they can't draw Punish Fire, they've got no red sources. So they don't have to pay here because it has Indestructible. But they might pay if they're not aware of that. Our opponent plays quite a lot of different decks from what I've come across them playing Legacy, so they might not be used to that interaction. Oh, they have a Wasteland. That's real good. That's real good. You try and hit our opponent for 14. It's possible, but not easy. That's not going to do it, is it? Uh, can't give our guy flying. I think we are giving it more chances to draw. I'm trying to think what we have to deal with a 2020 here. Ottawara, we don't have enough mana for. I don't know we have anything here. We'll do this, leaving as much mana as possible so we can draw some cards. No, we're just dead here. That's unfortunate. Alright, so... Much of the Body Light kills a 2020. It also blow up some random annoying permanents they might have. I don't think we need to Force of Negation, although it is very... Although it is, is it better than Force of Will? Because it removes life from the lane permanently so i think it probably is we don't have to worry about creatures too much stony silence has text but i'm not hugely in love with it I'm probably just dropping some of these uh what is our opponent going to bring in to they could have an engineered explosives is that worth bringing in a stony silence for i don't think so um i don't think we need spirit mantles for this matchup and we can probably have another force of will it's got five force of will effects that's probably fine we could Surge Extraction for the Life from the Loam, but I don't think it's the sort of game where them Life from the Loaming a load of times is going to make a lot of difference. And I'd rather try and just hit it with a Force of Negation, maybe. So we've got Boggle into Armour, and we've got the Force of Negation to counter their first spell. So our opponent's playing like 8 Mulch. So countering one of their spells is a lot more impactful than versus regular lands. Again, we are susceptible to Wasteland here. Let's see if our opponent has one. 
They do not, unless they're going to cast an expiration here. The question is, do I counter an expiration if they have one? Hmm. This does slow our opponent down a lot. I think it's worth hitting this. So we do need to draw some mana. We did not draw mana. Okay. Let's see if our opponent has a follow-up. A mana bond. Sure. So they can just dump their whole hand and make a 2020 this turn, perhaps. Okay. Scattered grows. Which one is that? That is the cycling one. Okay. Let's get curious. So our opponent is living off the top of their deck now. Whilst I have a really slow and miserable clock. We drew a land. I don't think there's any reason not to play this out now. It just gives us maximum damage next turn. So we can swing for 10 next turn. So they're probably going to copy a basic land with their Thespian stage this turn. Or they'll copy their scattered groves. That's what I would do. Okay, they want a Tundra. That's interesting. I guess it's a different name for the purposes of Field of the Dead. That makes sense. Is our opponent's one card good enough to stop our Slippery Bogle? Or Boggle, if you prefer. Are you going to put it into play? No. Okay, so it's on us. So we can draw more cards, or we can do more damage. It's a two-turn clock anyway, so I think I'd rather just draw more cards here. So white, blue. We kind of need to draw blue card and force of will. Or force of negation. So ideally looking for. Okay, so they're going to make a 2020 here. And kill our guy. Our opponent has ripped pretty good. We get to gain 10 life here. But no card draw for us. That's pretty awful for us. Yeah, our opponent needed to not draw that well. <laughs> Sadly. Turns out their hand was actually pretty bad. So if we'd have kept the... Um, we didn't actually need to hit the expiration there at all. Okay, so can we draw a Caracas? We cannot draw a Caracas. We're just dead. All right, so that's that end, that game done dusted. We're really struggling to find any wins with this deck now. We're finally on the play for a round. So our hand looks as good as a hand with this deck gets to look, really. Uh, our opponent's mulligan to six cards. They are on a 60-card deck, so not the 61-card oops or a Yorion build. Seachrome Coast is a bit of a weird start, and our opponent's probably going to pick up on that. Let's see what we're working against here. A Lotus Petal. Not great for us. Crow Mox, okay. Are they initiative or are they like some sort of storm? I guess we'll find out when we see what's imprinted under this Crow Mox. Amira's cool. So they're playing mono white initiative or it could be red white initiative, but they're playing the initiative deck. So we have an unblockable guy that can get a shitload of life link. So let's see if we can. Surely this is the one match that we can win, right? Turn 1 3 3 is a lot of damage though. Okay, a Tundra, that's a good draw for us, because it means next turn we can play Coronet and Curious Obsession. They shouldn't be able to interact with Invisible Stalker. So next turn we're bashing for 5 lifelink damage with Vigilance, and it draws us a card. The next turn we put another Coronet on. So we take the hit this turn. At least they didn't have a Soul Land, because they would have played it out first, so they could play a Seasoned Dungeoneer. Basic Planes. Okay. Touch of the Spirit Realm doesn't actually deal with uh, enchantments either, so we should be we should be able to have our cake and eat it for once one time blue, curious obsession on our guy daybreak coronet on our guy, white white, you can't block my guy I'm getting the initiative here pretty happy about this, we'll go and get ourselves a planes, and we'll draw ourselves a card, not a bad turn I don't think our opponent has any way of pumping instant speed so they can't attack into us either. Now, if they play a Seasoned Dungeoneer, they'll get protection from creatures and they just get to sail in. Elite Spellbinder is going to name Daybreak Coronet, but I don't think it matters anymore. I have enough cards in hand to just push through. And we're going to get Forge this turn as well. Yeah! <laughs> all right, we've finally got a win against... It's, only, it's, not, it's not even a match win, it's a game win, but all right, I'll take that. <clears throat> so what we're we looking at here, probably Plows. Plows going to do some work, I think. Which makes the question, what are we getting rid of here? The Stony Silence can mess with their mana base, but I don't think it can mess with their Chrome Mox and stuff. I don't think it's good enough, to be honest. We need to keep the Force of Wills just for their turn one nonsense. So maybe we're just doing the same trims we've been doing a lot. Getting rid of some combat research and then cutting one of our two drops. That's probably fine. Not really sure what our opponent can have for us. So this is a turn one Invisible Stalker. So we'll be keeping and hoping for the best here. This could be a chalice, I guess, this is the one thing they could be boarding in. Yeah, a chalice. Sure. That's pretty awkward for us, to be honest. 
So, how are we going to deal with this chalice? We didn't board in the much other world he likes, like an idiot. So that's not a great start. So we might be able to steal the initiative here, but being able to put anything on our guys is going to be difficult. But yeah, it looks like they're casting the three mana three three, the white plume adventurer. Sure. It's not the one, is it? We're not blocking here, so may as well steal the initiative, thin our deck slightly. Now we're just going to be handing the initiative backwards and forwards until one of us dies. Now, if we draw some of our two drop ones, then I think we'll be okay. So we can draw the lifelink curiosity, and then obviously we can draw the coronet after that, and we just win the game, I think. But our opponent's not making it easy for us. What have we got here? Cleric, human, an elite spellbinder. Sure, so they're not going to name anything in our hand. They shouldn't do anyway. They should name something else in our deck. Probably... Okay, oh, sorry, no, they have, this isn't the one that names, so I'm thinking of Anointed Peacekeeper. Yeah, so they're just exiling this guy that doesn't do anything. That's fine. Anointed Peacekeeper is the one that lets you um, name anything in the deck. Sorry. Okay, so they get to Undercity this turn. We get to hit them back and then get them into the forge ourselves. A very good turn to draw the lifelink curiosity. Slippery Bogle. Very slippery. So this is just attack in, get us some counters with the forge. But our opponent's going to hit us for 13 next turn. So we really need to find that lifelink. Uh, so if we... I'm just thinking, if we go and scry here to try and find the lifelink, this will hit for 2 next turn. And then we'll be dead. So we, we need to put the counters on this and draw the thing. I think that's the way we get back into this game. I think we're just going to gain 3 most likely here. 5, 10, 13. Because it's going to hit trap when they hit us. Yep. So they've got 5, 6, 7, 8 damage. So the curiosity one is, on its own isn't going to be enough here, is it? We're going to need a little bit of help. That doesn't really make any difference to us right now. I think we are dead. Just beaten by the chalice. Force of will. You're a little bit late. Although I think we'll concede here. And I think we probably just want these much by the world lights instead of the swords here. And just try and ignore their creatures as best we can. Um, do we want another counter spell? I think we, I think we want the staggering insight over a curiosity here, just for the purposes of having a two drop in case we get chaliced. And do we want? We can play like a turn one deafening silence off a lotus petal. I can really jam our opponent up. I think we're better off just having these things. We could maybe play one less curiosity. Do we need one less curiosity? One, two, three. Four. And we got all these as well. Just thinking if I want one force of negation just as another chalice solution. Because chalice is pretty bad for us. We could get rid of true name. True name is just good on its own. Kind of need the first strike on the hyena umbra here. Maybe we just have this. Let's have the one additional way to play around a chalice. Okay, so this needs any other enchantment and we're golden. Like some more land would obviously be nice too, but I think this is fine. You don't believe in the heart of the cards a little bit. Like, our deck is mostly uh, auras, so. This one out. Crack this. We get a Tundra. Our opponent doesn't mess with our lands. Blue. Blue. All right, opponent. Come on, top of the deck. Lifelink Curiosity, you want, please. A Chrome Mox. And a Thalia. And a Myria, taking three damage. Is this a Chalice? Sure. Okay. Our hand is not really bothered by Chalice. But we will need... Mm, this what is going on we can't afford to play our lotus petal either triple coronet can't i just play them both at once some miraculous fashion yikes so our coronets are getting worse every turn because we can't draw one drops well we can't cast one drops at least we have food for our okay so they're going to see our hand and they're probably going to name lotus petal and put us in the dirt didn't know our opponent was playing but i guess we definitely should have just played out the lotus petal anyway I think it's better to actually play out the Lotus Petal rather than worry about the opponent's um, like disruption effects they can have. So this is cost two mana now. This guy's not blocking, so... Okay, pretty sure we're dead here. Yikes. I like Petal costs three mana. I think we had just dead here. No joy for us. Where were you a million turns ago? Like, we're not dead, but we're not really much alive either. They don't have like the scary clock, they just have like the death and taxes type pieces here. Hmm. Alright. 
So our opponent doesn't want to play any initiative cards now because if we can get a land off of it, that massively helps us out. An anointed peacekeeper. We just can't allow our opponent to have another threat in play, I don't think. Uh, we'll pay one. We'll exile probably the stalker because at least the true name, if we ever get to that sort of mana, we can do something with it. So this is the two turn clock here. Not really sure what we're hoping to draw. We probably have to keep the... We need to draw a runner runner land, I think. Next turn, if we draw a land, we can block here and go to three. And then if we draw a land, we can block with the true name. We can You can play the true name and go to one. So we need to draw two lands on the next two turns that aren't fetch lands. That's the only way we get to play magic any longer. Now, some might argue playing Slippery Burgle deck isn't really playing magic. You know, not playing out that lowest pet has definitely cost us here. And that's entirely on me, I think. Whether or not we win this game, like... Uh, if we do, then I don't know, but we certainly would have given ourselves a chance to play something. An Avon Mind Sensor. Sure. Okay, I think that's just lethal because we can't deploy enough things to block it. Alright, another failure for the Boggles. Another win for the horrible initiative deck that everyone hates. Cool. Um, yeah, I think if I play out that petal, it was still quite a few turns before I drew the Staggering Insight. But we just didn't have any mana here, so we just kind of lost really. I think our hand was a fine keep. It played well around a chalice, which they had, which is one of the reasons I kept it. We just needed a little bit of help to get over the line. We just didn't get there. All right, on to the final round to see if we can scrape a win. We're on the play. We have a turn two guy. We have a force of will. And we have things to do with it. This has got to be keeper. We haven't had a lot of slippery bogle hands into good stuff. Our opponent's mulligan to six cards. Mox diamond from our opponent. Scaring a dark dance. Okay. Exploration. I think we let that go. Try and counter the crop rotation for the specifics. An Urza Saga. We don't care about the Urza Saga. We can make a lifelinking guy, but we are also making a lifelinking guy. Okay, two Urza Sagas. That's quite bold. Whether or not they can get them both active remains to be seen. Have like two ancient tombs in their hand. Right, here is your friend of mine, Invisible Stalk. Next turn, we Ethereal Armor Daybreak Coronet, which should be better than an Urza Saga creature. We have a counter spell covered if we need it for something. There's an Ancient Tomb and a Blast Zone. Okay, so they have the ability to make two Constructs this turn. Pretty good. So we've got sort of Tundra, we're already sort of on this. I think we're just making the most damages that we can make. We're in a race, so let's race. White, white. Six of your finest First Strike lifelink damage, please. We have a counter spell if we need it. How big are these going to be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're going to be bigger than our Invisible Stalker. It's pretty good. The Blast Zone, a little bit annoying. They might put counters on the Blast Zone. They are putting counters on the Blast Zone. Okay, we're going to lose the game. We need our opponent to not do that. So they're going to make two tokens here, potentially. Depends how urgently they think they need to kill the Stalker. Uh, if we'd have countered the Exploration instead of holding back for like a crop rotation or something... All right, but uh, our opponent had their one-off Blast Zone. So <laughs> I think holding their Force of Will to, like, counter spell crop rotation for Blast Zone is the correct play instead of hit hitting it for the exploration. But sometimes you play the numbers and you lose. That is the way the cookie crumbles. Dark Depths. So we can go and get Thespian Stage and make a 2020 next turn as well. I think we're probably just losing our Stalker this turn. Three mana for the Blast Zone. Yep, so we lose our guy. Gonna get mushed. Yikes. True name nemesis. I would like to be protected from my opponent. This can't block a lot of the trample damage, unfortunately. Pussy needle. I think it's just fetch lands we really care about. This is just to pump their construct token anyway. Although they just cracked their map for Thespian Stage and play it, they could represent it. The uh, 2020. So I think that's better than doing this play, to be honest. This play gets them one more damage and one more life, whereas the other way gets them to kill me next turn. So I think they made a little misplay there. Sea Crane Coast, that doesn't really do a lot, does it? So I think we will try this. Try this. I don't think it's worth holding back here. I think we just need a card so that maybe we can push through next turn with lethal damage. It's going to be hard to do, but we're going to need some, some of those. So how much damage are we taking this turn? We're going to have to take... Six this turn. They're gonna take five because they're cracking their map. 
Yeah, so if they'd have taken the line to make the 2020, we'd be dead now. So we take five this turn, it puts us a 10. So we need to gain 16, because we're hitting for 25. 16 is going to be a big ask with our little true name. All right, our opponent's turn. And they're going to make a 2020 in the near future. That 2020 will also have a Shadow Spear soon. So that's, that's not going to be great for us. If our guy had Vigilance that turn, he might be all right. Okay, so if we can gain 11 life, we might be okay. So we're going to need a bit more than just a Daybreak Coronet. Now, we could draw one of our March of Otherworldly Light. Uh, no, we haven't got those in the deck yet. All right, this is game one. Yeah, I think we are just somewhat screwed here. We're a little bit shy. If we'd had another Coronet, I think we might be okay for at least a turn. But having these uh, 20 power life, a 21 power lifelinker guy hitting us in the near future, probably not going to do it for us. Curiosity. Um, this is doing enough blocking on its own. I don't think we need to play anything. I guess we can play the Curiosity on our guy. It just makes it slightly bigger for the purposes of chunking through stuff. So our opponent's going to make a 2020 that they should have made the previous turn. So they have to attack with just a 2020. If they somehow make a mistake and attack with the construct and we're okay. I say okay. We're still completely screwed, but needs must sometimes. Let's see what our opponent does. Go on, hit that attack little creatures button. Boo, we're dead. Okay. So, can we sideboard into a way that allows us to actually play this game? So, we're going to want these March for the Lobby Lights here. That's a given. The plows have got text on them. Not sure how much we're going to need Spirit Mantle here. I think we need the petal to push, push out a little bit more. These Force of Negations are just going to be strictly better than Force of Wills because of the Life of the Loam thing that we mentioned in the previous matchup against one of these sorts of decks. Uh, maybe we don't need combat researchers again. I keep boarding these out. We have so many of these sorts of effects. Maybe it's just too many. One, two, three, four, five. That's fine. Have five Force of Will effects in. And then some March for the Lordly Lights. Like this this deck that I'm playing, we knew it was bad going in, but boy howdy, it hasn't felt good. <laughs> right, we at least have a basic to play up our Slippery Bogle with. Let's cast this guy. And we'll play our Lotus Petal. And next turn, we can put Staggering Insight on our guy. We have a as a Saga token covered. Is this going to be an expiration? Our opponent kept seven, so I have to imagine they have an expiration here. Yeah, okay. We can blow this up if we need to, but we'll see how this game pans out. Okay, a Tabernacle. That's fine. We have the Flooded Strand here. This is a little bit awkward because we're going to need a White Source here for future turns. Uh, do we just get Planes? I think we just get a plane so we're a little bit more insulated against wasteland here white and blue hopefully we can draw a mana source and then jam this coronet down our opponent's throat and try and ride to victory that way we have the Myrtle Age covered now our guy is just a 2-2 so it's not very big so an endurance can get it but if we can get the coronet into play that won't be the case anymore we're kind of keeping this invisible stalker in hand because we would like to have a blue card for force of will Okay, we have a Slippery Bogle, so we have another blue card for Force of Will, so maybe we're playing out the Stalker next turn if we can't do anything else. But if we draw that, we need to draw a mana to do that. So I think we're probably... Are they just going to... Okay, they have a Wasteland. Okay, so we correctly fetch basics. That's nice. Come on... White Source. We only get one go with the White Source because of the Wasteland in play. We have the White Source. All righty. So white and white. Can we get a win on the board with this deck, please? <laughs> so this outclasses an endurance now, quite handily. They might want us to not draw a card, so they might just throw an endurance under the bus, but I don't think that's a winning line for them. Green, green, colourless, and another green, and another colourless. Four mana. Oh dear. Force of Vigor. Yikes. Sure, we get to hit them for one with our Slippery Bogle. Force of Wills would have been nice. We are very far behind because our deck is terrible. And that's the reason I'm playing it, to, so that you don't have to. There's Wasteland. We have a choice of which one we use to play our, to pay our tabernacle cost with. I think we're supposed to pay with the white because we need the blue to draw cards. So we draw one of our curiosities. 
They're going to draw a white enchantment now because we tapped planes. But I think it is right to leave this open to get curiosity because that can get us more mana or more things that can actually stick onto our bogo and do the damage. A white spell, you say? Mm. Right, we can play out the other bogo and just try and hit our opponent for two each turn. Okay, so they're making a 20-20 this turn. And then we die. Because we didn't keep a white up for the thing. Alright, we can just concede here. Alright. So, this was an 0-5 deck. Which I don't even know if I've ever done an 0-5 on the channel before. And this deck, as the record would suggest, was terrible. I don't think this is a viable deck in Legacy. However, I think if you wanted to play this sort of deck, you shouldn't be playing the blue cards. So there's there's eight curiosities in green that you can play. There's things like Rancor, and the thing that running green gets you is eight one-drop creatures. So there were definitely games where we were just playing like a turn two invisible stalker, which is just far too slow for legacy at the moment. Like we're trying to make out some beefy threats and just smash people down in a way with these threats that our opponent can't realistically interact with too well. The problem with that is that all of our opponents interacted with our threats. <laughs> so we had Plague Engineers, we had Thoughtseize, we had the Singleton Blast Zone that we saw, we had Force of Vigors, we had Engineered Explosives. Our opponents just had loads of ways of interacting with our supposedly uninteracterable things, which as you can imagine kind of defeats the purpose of this deck. On top of that, we also had the issue that our guys were quite expensive. So like an Invisible Stalker or a Trio Nemesis for two or three mana can be quite a lot. That's why we have the Lotus Power, so we could maybe try and get them out a bit earlier. And we did do that on occasion. But there's already a deck that makes hard to interact with threats that beat you down really quickly. And that is White Initiative. And that deck has a much faster clock than what we're doing. They just put their guys down and smash you with them really really quickly and even if you remove them they still get all the bonus from the undercity so there's just no purpose for playing this deck to be honest if you want to play like a a tempo -y deck that draws cards and has force of wills in hand you should be playing ninjas i think that deck is actually quite good right now and i've played on the channel a couple of times and i think the people over in the ninja discord are doing a lot of work with it now and it seems like it is actually pretty pretty well placed in the meta because it, it's an absolute dog to control deck because they just remove all your guys however control is really bad in the format at the moment so i think playing the ninjas deck is where you want to be if you want a force of will curiosity style effect where you're drawing cards every turn from connecting and if you want a hard hitting deck that your opponent can't really interact with you want initiative there is just no reason to play this deck. There's no purpose to play this deck. However, I have played this deck today and I would like to think I'm doing a service to everyone who plays Legacy by having played this deck and showing you just how terrible it is and why you shouldn't play it. Now, I did notice two or so play mistakes that I made this league. Um, the big one being the not playing the Lotus Petal. Is that going to make me win the rounds? Maybe I could have won a game there. Maybe I could have even won a round there. But... Thinking of how I could have played slightly better to get one win in an entire league is very much a fool's errand. I think this deck is bad and it runs like eight good cards, uh, six good cards in it, right? So we've got Force of Will and Trina Nemesis. You could just play a deck that has Trina Nemesis and control spells and it would be better than this. You could, like, so I've seen some people playing like Stoneblade, like Blue White Stoneblade with Trina Nemesis. That's just a better version of this deck. Because you're going to be beating down just as hard. You've got the lifelink of the bat skull if you need it. Which is kind of one of the reasons people like this. Is because you have big chunks of life gaining for you. Your threats are hard to interact with. Because you have Trina Nemesis. And your Stone Void is already a two for one if it resolves anyway. And you just have interaction with your opponent. And you can counterspell their things and blow them up or whatever. And you know there are people out there playing initiative um, Stone Forge Trina Nemesis decks. Which again... They just do what we're trying to accomplish here better in every single way. So I don't think anyone should be playing this deck. Now, I'm sure I'm going to lose my mind at some point and play the green-white version of this deck just to have eight one-drops and see if that makes a difference. I suspect it might. But honestly, I need you to tell me in the comments to not do that because I don't need to be wasting my time and resources on playing these horrible decks. 
Um, but anyway, I think I did a service for everyone here. Cyberwise, whatever. I don't think it it matters. I think the deck is so intrinsically poor right now that there's just no reason to play it or even discuss it any further. All right. Just before we sign off, if you would like to subscribe and at least get me some subscribers for playing this horrible deck, that would be lovely. Uh, likes and comments, very welcome. They bump me up in the algorithms. And it's also nice to see what your feedback is on what I'm doing. All right. Thank you very much for watching this absolute travesty. And goodbye.